Okay, so now let's um, take care about the text that's uh, on that clock face here. Um, to do this, uh, we say create um, text, go to the options box. And the text that we want to type in is uh, in capital letters uh, Rolex. And we will um, take the font that I mentioned in the first video, the Baskerville old, old face. Um, yeah, that's not exactly the font um, because uh, I think this is yeah, a logo font. But uh, yeah, that's it comes close to that. Okay, so and then set it to polygons here, and uh, set the count here. Set it to quads, and uh, to count. And I have I've got the count here on a thousand. So let's uh, create that, and check it out from the perspective view. Um, so there's our font. So now let me check out the outliner here, down here, and let's um, take those curves. Uh, which are created as well, and um, the polygon geometry, and then hit Control G to group those, and then with that group selected, uh, center the pivot, and then let's rotate that guy negative 90 degrees in X, and then let's bring it um, to the uh, plane here as well, so bring it to the center of the grid, and I want to bring it right there hit X on my keyboard okay and now let's go to the top view and let's bring this into position and there you will see that this is not the exact same font oops we can do that so we on that and then we have to scale that guy in uh -huh. somewhere about here so Yeah, let's bring it somewhere here. And then we might want to scale it out a tiny bit. And then scale it in Z as well. Uh, something like this, yeah. It's not perfect, but yeah. It comes close. Okay, so now we get the Rolex uh, text uh, done here. And now let's take care about the Oyster Perpetual. And for this one, um, yeah, let's create another text. Go to the Create and Text Tool Options box. And then say uh, in capital letters uh, again, Oyster Perpetual. Uh, and this time we are using the um, another font. I think I used the Adobe Garamond, Garamond Pro Bold. Let's try this one here. I mean, you can take uh, whatever uh, font you want. Say OK. And then let's hit Apply and let's see how that looks from the perspective view. OK, so now again, let's go to the Outliner and let's uh, select the created curves and uh, the polygon geometry and then hit Control G to group that, center the pivot of the group, rotate that guy, negative 90 degrees in X, and then again let's, uh, first we can scale it down, and then let's uh, go to the top view. And then uh, <coughs> move it and hold on X to snap it to the grid somewhere about there and what I see or let me check it check that out first I think we could have used um, not the bold font could have used the regular one Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah, this is a little bit too bold. So yeah, let me let me delete that. And then I will go in and create um, the same with the Garamond, uh, the standard one. 
So let me pause the video and I'll be back in a second. Uh, so I corrected the font. Um, I took the um, Adobe Garamond uh, Pro, not the bold one, to create that. And yeah, it comes close to what you see in the background, right? It's not perfect, but yeah, it works out. So and um, for the uh, so we need the same um, font here. So I can see this down here where it says Cosmograph. So let's create that. Go to text again. And now we type in, in capital letters Cosmograph Adobe Garamon Pro, polygons, and so on and so forth. Hit apply. Let's go to the perspective view and check that out. It's looking all right. So again, let's go to the outliner here and let's uh, select the curves and the geometry. Hit Control G to group, center the pivot, uh, rotate that guy negative 90 degrees and X. And then let's uh, bring it into position. So let me switch to the quad view here and then hold down X and bring it to the center of the grid and Y. And let's move it here to the center somewhere. Let's go to the top view and tweak that. So now we have to scale that guy. Scaling down, down and down. And move it up. And scale it down a bit more. And move it somewhere into position. So move it here. Yeah. So let's... Uh, Scale that in a little bit. Yeah, it's not perfect again, but it should work out in the end. Okay, so if there's somebody's out there who knows exactly what fonts are used here on that watch, it uh, would be cool if you sent me a message via YouTube or on my email address. So I was uh, actually I was. Um, looking for for that uh, font uh, and I tested out uh, you know uh, why uh, what the font.com and stuff like that but I couldn't find it out perfectly right so for this uh, text here superlative chronometer and officially certified um, I think I will take the uh, micro grammar extended font for that um, so yeah Again, it's the same process uh, what I'm doing here. So let me pause the video again. And I'll be back when I've created the, uh, the text. All right, so here I'm back with those um, text uh, with that text created here. So let me hide that reference image so that you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it works in the end. So let me zoom out. Um, and what we do now is let's uh, go to Hypershade. Um, got a button here. Let it load up here. Takes a second. And now let's create a, a Maya surface shader. So go here to the Maya um, shaders and create a surface shader. And with that uh, surface sh shader selected, let's double, double click on that. And let's check that out. So it's black. That's perfect. So let's uh, select all of our objects here. And right click and say assign existing material and then assign that surface shader. And now we have that black surface shader assigned. Um, yeah, we will. Uh, let me take a look at that. So if I sh show up the reference image, so we still have um, two text types here the red Daytona uh, stuff and the Swiss made. That's what we're going to do in Photoshop in the next video. And um, yeah, what we will do in the next video as well is creating a camera and then uh, create um, uh, the main part here of that geometry. We create a texture from that here in Maya. So let me pause the video and I'll be back in the next one.